Hi everyone, hope you are doing great. Uh, in this video, I would like to present some of the basic concepts behind uh, REST API, uh, some definitions and really uh, meaningful and simple examples for us to understand how does it work. So I'm using Go REST uh, APIs for doing some testing. So I will explain the way they work. And also I'm using Postman for testing them. So let's let's start with the basics and just some definitions. Uh, starting with REST and the definition, it is representational state transfer. And here I put it one simple and basic image to represent the architecture at a high, high, high level. So here we have the client. On the other side, we have the API. And then there is a space between these two and basically we are requesting something and we are getting something as part of it. So there are different uh, ways of requesting the information for the server to understand. And then since we are sending uh, metadata as part of the request, we know what to expect. So this is the basic architecture. And there are four uh, basic principles related with REST, starting with the client server as it is in the image. So on one side, we have the client. On, on the other side, we have the server and we are separating co concerns. So the second point, this one is really important when we are talking about REST and it is because it is stateless. A statelet, stateless means that uh, we are not handling or saving any state between these two. So basically uh, as part of the request, we send all the information to fulfill the request and we don't need to 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 know who is talking to each one because it is all part of the request information then uh, we have that it is cacheable uh, with this we we uh, are referring to the information that we are passing from the client to the server and it is possible that the information that we have on the client uh, we don't need to request it again so we can reuse resources that we already have on the client and that's a really good uh, concept because we can uh, boost the performance of the applications. Why? Because if we label, if we tag a resource as cacheable and we are, if we already have it in the, in the browser cache, there is no need to go to the server. There are complex operations that can be done on this side that we can avoid if, if the object can be cached. Then uh, this is a layered system and it, we, uh, as, as we said before, we have a client server, but it is also a layer system as well. In this case, we are separating concerns in different layers. So let's talk about resources. So this is like the key concept of REST. Basically, basically this is the primary data representation. And what are we requesting to the server? Uh, for requesting a resource, we use uh, the U URI. It is, uh, it is universal resource identifier to get us on a specific resources. Here on the right, they put it some examples. Uh, this is just dummy data and it can be singleton or collection. Singleton is basically we are requesting one resource. Collection is that we are expecting multiple resources as part of the response. Finally, in regards to these three, uh, they can be hierarchical. Uh, for example, if we have the employee, it is possible to have uh, the supervisor and then we have uh, employees that are managed by, by that supervisor. So that's hierarchical. Or we have an employee and, and the person has parents. So that's hierarchical as well. And we use the slash for differentiating that. Then as recommendation for following the principles of uh, REST, it is recommended to use nouns instead of verbs. So here, let's go through this example. Let's suppose that we have uh, api.jd.com and then employees. So this is for getting information. I will explain later the different methods, but let's suppose that we are just getting information, requesting information to, from the server. So here we are using plural for getting the resource. So in this case, we are requesting all the employees. Then what if we use employees and then we pass the employee ID? We are requesting an, a specific employee. 
That's why we use plural, because plural uh, can be used for one and can be used for multiple. So what if we want to get the parents associated to a specific employee? So we have employees, we have the employee that we are uh, trying to uh, check, and then we retrieve all the parents. Then let's suppose that we want to get the employee, we want to get the parents associated to that employee, but we also want just a specific parent. So we pass also the ID of the parent. That's the way it works. And that's a great example of hierarchical resources. So let's keep going for going into the real examples. Uh, key factor related with res is uh, actually the status codes. So we have the HTTP status codes and there are many. So I put it here just a summary of the mainly used status status codes and they are grouped uh, in different uh, hundreds let's say in that way 100 200 300 400 and 500 100 is usually is used for information so the status codes is the status that we are getting from the server as part of the response for example what if we get 100 it is basically continue and in this way we are telling the client that we received the information, we are working on it, but we are waiting for more. So just continue sending information. Then 200, uh, it is success. Example, 200, uh, it is okay. We receive it. Here is what you requested, for example. 201, it is created, especially used in post request. And 202 for accepted. Then let's go to 300. It is redirection. For example, 301, it was moved permanently. Or 304, it was not modified. It, then we have 400. It is used for client errors. It means that there is something wrong with the request created by the client. So if we return 400, we were not able to find the resource. For example, let's suppose that we are trying to find employee one. If it is not there, let's return 400 not found. And when we have authorization or authentication, for example, if the user is not authorized, we return 401. Finally, status 500 is related with server errors. Especially, we use 500 when there is an internal server error. And also, 501 for not implemented methods. Then really quick here related with the HTTP methods. So we have uh, five methods for requesting a resource, for creating a resource, for updating a resource. So this is what we specify when we are creating the request. Post is used to create resources. Usually we get 201 when the resource is successfully created. Get this is a read only re uh, method. We are requesting a resource from the server. 200 is used to say success along with the party. Then 404 if the resource is not found. Then we have put. This is used for update and replace content for a specific instance. So if we return 200, that's, that's okay, it was updated. 204, no content. And 404, not found. What if we are trying to update a resource that does not exist? So we return 404. And 405 is, is especially using collection when the method is not allowed or any other, any other uh, type of request when the method is not allowed. So you, we just return 405. For example, we are trying to create many resources, update many, and we just support updating one at a time. So we return 405. Then we have patch. Usually these two are confused, but in general patch is, patch is used for partial update or modifications. And it is quite similar to put in regards to the responses. Finally, we have delete method. And as it says, it is used for deleting resources. So 200 if it is deleted successfully, 404 if it is not found, 
and 405 if it is not allowed. I mean, this has, this, these are just common responses that we could get from a server. Some recommendations in regards to RESTful, sorry, in regards to REST and RESTful as well. So use lower cases. For example, in this case, please avoid using upper cases in the URLs. Never use file extensions as part of the URL. For example, this one, that JSON. Never use CRUD operations as part of the request. For example, to get employees, because what if we want to update? What if we want to delete? What if we want to, if we want to create? So it is not needed because we have the HTTP method for us to tell the server what are we trying to do. So we don't need to use CRUD operations. If you don't know the meaning of CRUD, it is create, read, update, and or delete. Let's go to Postman because I created some examples here. Let's let me explain first uh, what I'm using. This is the GoRest site, and you can just create a an account. I mean, I I'm just testing this site because I have never used it before so I found this and it seems to be useful so you can create a token and then just start using it the way you should pass the token is via URL usually it is it is passed via authorization or headers but they ask me to pass it via URL so please is ignore this section of the URL let me go here let me go to the site let's go to the methods and now following what we just uh, went through in the presentation. So for example, here, if we want to create a new resource, we can call this URL, get a specific user. Uh, here we are updating, then we can delete. So here are some examples, here are the methods, here are the method pause. So let's go now in Postman. Let's start with the basics. So let's suppose that we want to create a specific user. So this is the URL. Ignore after the question mark because that's just for the access token. So we have the URL for the users. We have the HTTP method and we have the body that we are. The, this is basically the person, the user that we are trying to create. We don't need to pass the ID because that will be automatically generated. So in this case, this is my email, name, gender, and status. Let's try it. So the user is now created. And as part of the response, as you can see, I got the status 201 created. I got many headers and I got the output. This is the user that was created and this is the ID. So let's take this ID for going to the next tab. Now, let's try to retrieve that specific user. I can use this one. Sorry. User method is get. I'm passing the access token as well. I got the user. So it is working. What happened if I request an user that does not exist? Let's see what happened. So 404 not found resource not found is the message. Perfect, as we went through the presentation and we defined it. Now let's try to update an user. So here I have the payload, the same user as the one that I created, but I want to change the name. So as you can see in the URL, I pass the users and the user ID. Then here, let's say I want to use JD coder. Let's send 200. So it was successfully updated. Now, if I go back to get, let's see if the name is changed. JD coder, perfect. So now if we go to the definitions, we can create post right here for a specific user. If we want to create a post, 
for that specific user, 3409. Let's go back for this specific user. Let's post this body to create a user post. So if I run it, the post was created. So this is the post ID. What if I try to get it? I want to get all the posts. Right now there is only one, 200 OK, and we get an array. And finally, something interesting in regards to this request URL definition is that for getting a specific post, we don't need to pass the user and the user ID, then the post and the post ID. I would prefer in that way, but this is the way it was created. So I just need to pass the post ID. This is not the post ID. I got it here. 1693. And we got it. So in this way, we went through basically all the examples. I hope that this information was useful for you. If you have any question, leave it in the comments, please. And thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.